I'm Ash Barigala. Welcome to Awaken Your World. Today is a motivational video. I wanted to put together a few steps on how to become a better version of yourself or a better version of ourselves. Now, a lot of um, things that you do, a lot of ventures, businesses, brands, or even career paths depend on skills, knowledge, and development on one hand, and a, a kind of a self-development, uh, internal motivation, internal development on the other hand. A lot of people focus on developing their skills, but routinely tend to sort of ignore or maybe even not really pay attention to internal development. So I wanted to do a series of Motivational Monday videos and um, just talk about things that would take you from, you know, wherever you are to a better version of yourself. This is not about competing with others. This is about competing with yourself. Because once you compete with yourself and you go to the next level in your personal development, then of course the results um, will become evident um, in your business, your brand, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. So in today's video, we're looking at eight steps on how to become a better version of yourself in 2021. For each of these steps, I'm also going to attach a small clip of um, someone successful, a successful entrepreneur, a successful businessman, or a successful coach. Um, you know, and, and a lot of the names you've probably heard, you've watched the videos, taken some small clips just to sort of support the points that I am listing out. All right, so let's jump into the list itself. The first one is thinking big. Now, I would encourage you to think big in anything you do, including business, brands, you know, developing a brand, a venture, uh, even if you're a student, even if you are um, someone who is not really chasing after kind of material things, thinking big in anything you do is fundamental. This is fundamental human right. It's a human emotion, thinking big. And I've always done that in whatever I did, the ventures, uh, businesses, brands that I built. T is for talent, which God gives to every single person, not just the ability to sing and dance and throw a ball, but intellectual talent. And uh, if we develop that and use that, we'll be able to chart our own course. The H is for honesty. And uh, basically, it means doing things the right way. If you put skeletons in the closet, they will come back to haunt you just when you don't want to see them. The I is for insight, which comes from listening to people who've already gone where you're trying to go. Learn from their triumphs, learn from their mistakes. You'll move much further and much faster if you can do that. The N is for nice. Be nice to people because once they get over their suspicion of why you're being nice, they'll be nice to you. And you can get so much more done when you're being nice and they're being nice. And it just means taking yourself out of the center and maybe thinking about someone else first. The K is for knowledge, which is the thing that makes you into a more valuable person. You know, the things don't mean anything, but it is knowledge that it allows you to be able to acquire things. It allows you to be able to move to the place that you want to move to and to accomplish the things that you want to do. So that is really why Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, talked so glowingly about what knowledge could do for a person. The B is for books, which is the mechanism for obtaining the knowledge. Some people say, I don't need to read, I can watch DVDs and videos. That's like saying you can develop your muscles by watching someone else lift weights. You know, when you read it actually makes a real impression on your mind, it actually creates special pathways and it makes it easier to remember and it develops just like a muscle. The second I is for in-depth learning, learning for the sake of knowledge and understanding as opposed to superficial learning. Superficial learners cram, cram, cram before a test, sometimes do okay and three weeks later, know nothing. It doesn't stick. But in-depth knowledge becomes a part of who you are, makes a huge difference. And the last letter, G, is for God. You know, there are many people who are trying to move God out of our society, but what do you replace him with? You replace him with man? Well, we know how imperfect man is and yet we know how powerful and perfect God is. And if we allow godly principles in our lives of loving your fellow man, caring about your neighbor, developing your God-given talents to the utmost so that you become valuable to the people around you, having values and principles that guide your life. If you do that, not only will you be successful, but you will contribute to a successful Next, have an action plan. Having an action plan for achieving your goals um, in business or in careers is fundamental. A lot of people think that they do have an action plan, but rarely do they have a structured kind of action plan. In this video clip, you're going to find out a few steps on how to put together an action plan to achieve success. The first step in creating an action plan is deciding exactly what you want. 
Clarity is the most important single quality of goal setting and perhaps the most important single quality of success. Write your goals or goal down on a sheet of paper. Only 3% of adults have written goals and everyone else plans to write them down someday. Success begins with a piece of paper, a pen, and a few minutes of your time. The third step is setting a deadline. If it's a large goal, set a series of sub-deadlines. And what if you don't achieve your goal by the deadline? Set another deadline. Remember, a deadline is just a guesstimate of when you will achieve it. You may achieve the goal well in advance, or it may take you much longer than you expect. But you must have a target time before you set off. A deadline acts as a forcing system on your subconscious mind toward achieving your goal on schedule. The next step in creating an action plan is making a list of everything that you could possibly think of that you will have to do to achieve your goal. After having a written goal, one of the things that holds people back is not taking the time to lay out a list of all the little things they will have to do to get there. Identify the obstacles that you will have to overcome. Identify the knowledge information and skills you will need and then identify the people whose help and cooperation you will require to achieve your goal. Now that you have this comprehensive list, schedule it into a comprehensive plan. Plan each day, week and month in advance. Plan each month at the beginning of the month. Plan each week, the weekend before. And plan each day, the evening before. The more careful and detailed you are when you plan your activities and tasks, the more you will accomplish in less time. The rule is that each minute spent on planning saves 10 minutes on execution. Then, as you go through each day of your plan, select your number one most important goal for the day. Again, you can set your priorities with the 80-20 rule. Ask yourself, if I can only do one thing on this list, which one activity is most important? Then ask yourself, if I could only do one other task on this list, which one would be the most valuable use of my time? Then write a number two next to it. Now keep asking this question until you have the top 20% of your tasks organized by sequence and priority. And now you have an action plan. Next is managing your time. Of course, this sounds uh, like an obvious thing and a lot of people think, okay, yeah, of course we need to manage our time. But most people think of managing time as, for example, um, scheduling or, um, you know, uh, listing out tasks and then getting through those tasks or checking email only twice a day. Yes, they're all time management tools, but I look at it more from a, a philosophical perspective. And so does the next video, uh, video clip. It, it looks at time, uh, time management from a, a more of a, uh, a philosophical kind of mindset. All time management should always start with a higher level of conversation about your life goals about what do you really want to achieve in life? And working backwards from there. Because most people would say, well, you know, time management, uh, check your email just twice a day. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a great tip, thanks. But what's your goal? I mean, what do you really want in life? If you don't start from there and then work backwards, then you're just kind of doing random tasks each day. You'll find yourself doing busy work, but it's not your life's work. You might be getting progressively faster or better or higher achieving or more respected over here, but it's in the wrong area. So let's not make you effective and productive going down the wrong path. Start with the big question. What do I really want for my life now? You've been through enough. What now? I mean, you're older now, you're more mature now, you're more independent. What, what do you want now? And when you think about that, think about three big categories. First, think about yourself, your character. Who do you want to become as a person? Who would you feel proud to be? You know, what would create a lot of self-respect? and integrity in your life, where you're thinking, that's the kind of person I want to be. Start there always. Like, what kind of person do you really want to be? What would you have to achieve to feel good about yourself? Second, think about your relationship goals. Like, how do you want to show up? For your family, for your spouse, for your team, for those that you lead or serve? What kind of person shows up for them? What's that energy like in your interactions? What do you ultimately want to have or experience uh, in your family? Like, how would you know you're successful unless you're gauging somehow what you want in your relationships? And then also think about your growth goals. Like, what would make you exceptional at what you do? What would really bring a higher level of excellence into your life? What about growth goals in terms of enrichment? What would make you happier? What would make you feel calmer, more stable, more mindful, more joyous, more happy? I know these are random sets of questions, but they're all tied to one simple idea. We should know what our big picture is. What's our life goals? And then work backwards from there. Because then it gets easy. Next is staying focused. 
you start out a year, you start out a new year, you start out business, brand, or venture, and there's a lot, there's a kind of a honeymoon period where, you know, it's very exciting, um, you're focused and you're trying to get things done, and then it sort of plateaus out, right? It plateaus out and then you find that your focus is being sort of, you're being pulled. Um, so staying focused is fundamental to achieving success. In 2021, we're coming from 2020, where we were distracted with a lot of things, but we need to now put, put our focus, uh, we need to hone our focus, we need to have a laser light focus. The next video talks about, the video clip talks about how to stay focused and a few different tools and things like that. means for one who is unwavering in his intention, for him, liberation cannot be denied. The only reason most of the humanity goes about their life, blundering through their life, not knowing which way to go, is because they keep shifting the direction of their life too often. They may not actually change the direction of their life, but in their mind and emotion, it keeps shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting. At least ninety-five percent of the human energy is wasted, is simply wasted because most human beings cannot hold anything in their focus for any substantial amount of time. Otherwise, each of them would be opening up a new window, a new door to something else. Seven billion people, if they had all had their minds and consciousness focused, everything, just everything have to yield. Nothing would be unexplored, just everything. Next is being consistent. If you're consistent, success automatically is at your doorstep. And the reason is that consistency, it also is attached to a couple of other points that I talk about later on, but consistency is, is fundamental to building success. And if you look at any big brand out there, any successful entrepreneur, you find that they have been consistent all the way through. Even when things were against them, they have been consistent. So the next video clip talks about how to be consistent, how to achieve consistency in your life. And here are five secrets to help you be more consistently consistent. Number one is keep your eye on your why. In order to really stay connected to what you're doing over the long haul, you have to have a clear, compelling vision for what you're trying to achieve and know why you want to do it. So for example, it's a lot easier to keep saving consistently if you're saving for something important to you, like your first house or a once in a lifetime trip. Number two is pick your battle. Now notice, I didn't say battles, I said battle. So I want you to pick one thing and just stick with that. The reason why is that we human beings have limited capacity when it comes to willpower and discipline. In fact, studies show that doctors recommend you do not try to do something like quit smoking and quit sugar at the same time, or you're going to fail at both. And I tend to agree. So pick one thing. And once you really make that a habit and you win that battle, then you can add on something else. Number three is schedule it. The late Stephen Covey said this, and it is a major, major secret to consistency. Don't prioritize your schedule, schedule your priorities. So this subtle distinction is so important. When you're trying to make something consistent in your life, you want to really build your whole life around it rather than trying to fit it in. Number four is ignore your feelings. Now, this is probably the only time you're going to ever hear me say this, but when it comes to developing consistency, it's pretty darn important to ignore the voice in your head that says, well, I don't feel like it. I mean, anytime you're trying to be consistent at something worthwhile, like working out or meditating or painting or whatever, it's guaranteed you're going to hear that voice. Well, I don't feel like it. I mean, I hear that voice all the time. There are some days, as much as I love what I do, I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like doing much of anything. But I've trained myself to override that whole voice in my head because I know the power of consistency. Number five is catch that wagon. So don't have an all or nothing mindset. Don't think that if you miss one day meditating, or you miss one workout that you're a total failure. When it comes to falling off the wagon, that's fine, and you probably will. We all do. This is where I think you're getting tripped up, though. I think you're spending so much time beating up on yourself that you fell off the wagon that the wagon is just leaving into the distance and you're not getting back on it. So make sure you run and catch that wagon. Next, developing self-confidence. Self-confidence is fundamental to success. Now, I keep saying that each of these is fundamental to success, but self-confidence really is one of those really, really fundamental steps, not just for success, but also, uh, you know, in going through life and, and, and having happiness because self-confident people are 
happy people. Now, I'm not talking about arrogance, right? So self-confidence should not be confused with arrogance. Um, if you, I mean, a lot of videos on, on the internet, uh, a lot of people advising, talking about self-confidence, they sort of blur the line between self-confidence and arrogance. It's not, if you're arrogant, doesn't mean you're confident, right? So you got to be careful with that. But the next clip talks about self-confidence um, from a philosophical perspective again, and how to attain uh, self-confidence. The most important thing, self-confidence. Without that skill, and I use the word skill intentionally, without that skill, we are useless as a soccer player. Because when you lose sight or belief in yourself, we're done for. I use the definition of self-confidence to be the ability or the belief to believe in yourself to, to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, no matter the difficulty, no matter the adversity. The easiest way to build self-confidence, there's no magic button. I can't say, hey, this plane is going down. Who can fly it? Put your hand up. I can. I'm confident. <laughs> repetition, repetition, repetition. The problem is we expect to be self-confident, but we can't be unless the skill or the task we're doing is not novel, is not new to us. We want to be in a situation where we've created, we've had so much pressure in that. And what I mean, because pressure builds diamonds, we want to be in a situation where, hey, I've done this a thousand times, right? Over and over and over again. The problem with repetition is how many of us bail after the first bit of failure? How many of us bail after the first bit of adversity? Edison was on that video. And it depends who you ask. There's anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 tries to build that light bulb. 1,000 to 10,000. J.K. Rowling should be on that video. You know how many publishers she took her Harry Potter book to? I believe the number was 12 or 13. Practice, 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 and do not accept failure. Maybe it shouldn't be repetition. Maybe the answer should be persistence. Stop procrastination. Uh, it's easier said than done. It's one of my pet peeves. Uh, you know, I always talk about procrastination. Procrastination is nothing but laziness manifesting in our lives, and everyone has it. Uh, it's it's probably one of the fundamental kind of um, uh, vices or evils that really keeps us from doing what we're meant to do and achieving greatness. Um, procrastination has an opportunity cost. Um, the next clip talks about a few different steps on how to tackle procrastination, how to combat procrastination. First, break down the steps. With any task you need to do, whether studying for an exam or completing a project, break it down to smaller steps. Doing so will increase expectancy in our procrastination equation as smaller tasks seem much easier to accomplish than larger projects. Number two, keep the task small. The hardest part in getting work done is just starting. One of my favorite study hacks to address this is the Pomodoro technique. In short, you work 25 minute blocks, each separated by a five minute break. During each block, you focus on just one small task. In my Pomodoro Technique video, I go over in more detail what the technique is and exactly how to use it. Number three, set the bar low. This is yet another trick to increase the expectancy in our equation. Set the goal to something less than what you are actually capable of. I have used this recently for my own meditation practice. When I set out to meditate 20 minutes every day, I only got around to doing it a couple times per week. It just felt like I never had time to actually sit down and do 20 minutes of meditation, so I rarely did. Instead, I lowered my expectations by aiming to meditate just two minutes every day. By lowering the bar, I found myself meditating most days, and even though I set the goal as just two minutes, I almost always exceeded it. Number five, use Parkinson's law to your advantage. The idea that you can complete your task at a later time can crush even the most productive individuals. Enter Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law states that work expands to fill the time allotted to it. Meaning if you have only 30 minutes of work to do, but you allot two hours of work to do it, then you'll end up spending the entire two hours. As I've stated in other videos, I use this technique frequently by creating artificial deadlines that force me to get work done more efficiently. These artificial deadlines decrease delay in our motivation equation, thus decreasing the likelihood of procrastination. The trick is to not be too aggressive with your timeline as it can lead to unnecessary stress. With time, you will get more accurate at gauging how long a task will take and how to use Parkinson's law to your advantage. And finally, Number eight, changing your mindset towards wealth, not just in terms of wealth out there, but also you making money, others making money, how you look at it. Because a lot of people, um, they want to make money, but then when they look at other people making money, either they think that it's, it's ill-gotten gains or they think that they're selfish and all that. So looking at wealth, looking at money making from the right kind of mindset is very important. It's not just about wanting to make money. It's about looking at what wealth can do for the world. And um, the next clip is by Peter, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, one of my most favorite modern day philosophers, and he puts it beautifully. Citizens have the inalienable right to benefit from the results of their own honest labor. 
That's a good one. Yes, that's a conservative truism. You know, why? Well, it isn't because, you, because you're good-hearted and you want them to have money. It's because they'll work if you let them benefit from the work and you want them to work because if they work, then they do things that you need. It's as simple as that. It's self-interest and it's the right kind of self-interest. So if you work hard, it's like, great, have your money. You know, and you, you hear people all the time talking about how corrupt our society is and how the 1%, you know, occupies this pinnacle position. You know, the 1% turns over pretty damn fast, just so you know it. So you have about a 10% chance of spending at least one year in the top 1% chance during your life. I think that's right. I think it's 10%. It might be higher than that. But it's fast. It, it's, the 1% is stable as a phenomena, but it turns over very rapidly in terms of who occupies it. And it's the same in every society. The wealth is always distributed inequitably. It's a natural law. You can look it up. It, it, it was discovered by a guy named Wilfred Pareto back in the late 1800s. Goods tend to, dem to distribute themselves inequitably. It can be a problem. But it doesn't mean that there's something fundamentally corrupt about the social structure that's driving it in that direction. And Like, you, you don't want some filthy rich geniuses lying around? Like, maybe you do. I mean, look at what Elon Musk is doing, for God's sake. Maybe he should have ten times as much money as he has. He's going to launch a rocket every five days to Mars in the next ten years, right? He wants to wipe out fossil fuel cars, and he might do it. He wants to revolutionize the transportation system, and he might do it. He wants to put us on the damn solar grid with his new batteries, and he might do it. It's like, oh no, he has a couple of billion dollars. Well, God only knows what he's going to produce with that. It's like, so... Obviously, there's going, to be some corrupt, there's going to be some corrupt, rich plutocrats who do nothing but smoke cigars and snort cocaine. They're not going to live very long anyways. But there's lots of people out there who have the money they have because they would really like to do interesting and creative things with it, not because they're interested in gathering more you know, paper money to stuff in their mattress and, and to, like, to feel the, the smooth the smooth delight of gold coins between their fingers before they go to bed. Like, what kind of attitude is that towards people who've made their fortune? You know, you think that about Steve Jobs? You think that about Bill Gates? I mean, good God, I don't know how, those people made a lot of money, but man, thank God they were around, you know? They've given us some tools that are just absolutely unbelievable. So, you know, maybe we could leave the jealousy of the successful behind for a while and notice now and then that some of the people who got to where they are actually deserve to get to where they are and we should be thankful that they exist. That would be nice. A little gratitude. And that's a good conservative value too. All right. I hope you enjoyed these steps uh, on the video clips. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, just leave them below. If you love this video, please throw a like and subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting more motivational videos, uh, business brand related videos, and it's all about success. So let's take this forward. Let's become successful in our lives and let's share our stories. Till the next video, take care.